Do you want to add active storage to your Ruby on Rails application? And stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Braintrust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna walk through how to add active storage to a Rails 6 application, specifically the AWS Rails app. Active storage makes it easy to add imagery to your models. In our case, we're gonna be adding profile pictures to our device users. So if you haven't seen the AWS Rails device tutorial, I'll link that here in the card and then down here in the description. Active storage facilitates uploading files to cloud storage services. Of course, being Amazon focused, we're gonna be creating an Amazon S3 bucket to hold our uploaded imagery. But you can use this with Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure or a couple of others, as well as local storage. Then we'll move on to installing active storage in our existing application. Next, we're gonna create the forms to add, edit, and remove imagery from our device users. Finally, we're going to create an image variant that we will use to display the profile picture on the user's page. Now that we have all that set up out of the way, let's get into the AWS Rails tutorial series, adding active storage to an existing Rails application. We've got our AWS Rails app running locally here. So let's jump into Sublime Text and start making some changes. The first thing we're gonna do is uncomment the image processing gem as we're gonna be creating variants of our imagery. Next, we're gonna add a couple more gems, the AWS SDK S3 gem, so that we can integrate with S3. After we've got active storage up and running, we're gonna shove our images off to S3 for storage. Next, the active storage validations gem is just gonna allow us to run some extra validations on active storage. We can talk about that once we get into that portion of the video. Save, bundle, install those gems. Now that we've got our gems installed, we can install active storage. This will copy in the migrations we need to utilize active storage. You can flip back to the uh, application real quick to see those migrations. Next, we can migrate the database. Okay, now that active storage is installed and our database has been migrated, we're gonna hop over to our user model. We'll be using active storage to add a profile picture to our users. This first line here is our integration of active storage. You get a couple of options here. You can has one attached, or you can use the has many attached. Since we're only going to have a single profile picture, we're going to use the has one attached. Dependent destroy means it will delete this image if we delete the user. Below you can see that we're validating the profile picture for the content type of PNG or JPEG. This is not a default functionality within Rails or active storage. We get this by adding the active storage validations gem. So that's where this comes into play here but this way we can guarantee that our user is only uploading the type of imagery that we want. We need to add a new method and some parameters to the controller, but first we're gonna update the routes real quick. Next, we're gonna create a member route that'll make it easy for us to delete our user's profile imagery. I don't think we've discussed member routes in the past, but what this is saying here is that this route expects to have a user ID present. If we flip back over the console and run Rails routes, this will print out all of our routes. If we then pipe that into grep users just to kind of limit the output, you'll be able to see our new delete image user route. This is what I mean by expects a user ID. So you're gonna use a member route whenever you want to perform an action for a specific user or on a specific user. Conversely, if you wanted to perform an action on all users, then you'd create a collection route. In a collection route, there'd be no parameter here for an ID. It would just be users delete image. Since we want this to occur on an individual user, we're going to leave this as a member route. Now that we've got our route set, we can go ahead and enter our controller. Here we'll paste in the action to delete image that we just linked in our routes. Let's walk through this now. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fetch the image from active storage and store that into an image variable. Since the image is related to the user, calling image.record will give us the current user. So next we're gonna check if the current user is equal to the images user. Basically what that's saying is you can only delete your own profile pictures. 
Let's also tack on here if or current user dot admin, just in case the admin needs to step in and delete an image as well. Next, if one of these conditions is met, then you can call dot purge, which is the active storage method for deleting an image. Finally, you'll redirect back to the original page. In this case, the edit form. If a user attempts to delete another user's profile image, it'll be redirected back to the home page with a notice. Next, we need to add profile picture to the strong parameters so that the user will be able to upload an image. Now that we've got our route set and our controller configured, let's go ahead and add our code to the views. Just below the last name, we're gonna paste in our code. This is long, but don't worry, we'll walk through it. So in this first condition, we're checking if there's an attached image. Next, we'll also check if the file attached is representable. Representable returns true if the blob is variable or previewable. Previewable returns true if the registered previewer accepts the blob. You can see by default this adds videos and PDFs, but since we've got our scope in the user model to only limit these to PNGs and JPEGs, we should be fine here. Next, we're inserting an image tag containing the profile picture. Then we're calling dot variant resize onto that profile picture. The variant command uses the image processing gem to create new imagery with the passed in requirements using underlying software such as uh, image magic in this case. What this says is that we're going to take the large profile image you uploaded and resize it to 100 pixels by 100 pixels and then display it on the screen. Next here is just a bit of HTML, which you'll see on the front end when we load this page up. Uh, this is just something I typically do to kind of clean the form up. Next, you can see we have the remove without replacing link, where we're calling the delete image URL. So this accounts for when we have a valid image. We're gonna collapse that now just so this is a bit easier to read. When we don't have an image attached or one that we could display, then we're just going to output a div. We're gonna eventually attach some styling to, to just have a gray default image placeholder. Finally, we're going to have our form file field where we'll select and attach the actual image. So we can go ahead and expand that again. I'm going to quickly paste in some styles for our user. These aren't super important to this video, but we need to have them to get our clean layout. Next, I'm also going to paste a bit of JavaScript. This is not required to get active storage functional. Like the style sheets, this is just to clean up the user interface. I find it just makes for a little bit better user experience. Now that we've got everything in place, we should be able to upload a new image to our profile. Let's go ahead and flip to the front end and log in and do that now. Now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and visit our profile. We'll click the edit my profile button. Here you can see the new section for our profile image. Now if I go ahead and click choose file, and select a picture and click choose, then click update user. You can see it says that we've successfully updated our profile, but you don't see anything as we haven't edited the show page yet. So let's go ahead and click edit profile again. Here it looks like we just made a typo in, in the delete link for our image. So let's go back into the form and correct that now. And then we'll refresh. The last thing I'm noticing is that this form field should be hidden when we have an image uploaded. Uh, the reason for this issue is that we don't currently have access to, to jQuery in this project. So while this isn't required, again, to get active storage up and running, if you want to use the exact code that I have here to make for a clean user interface, then you will have to include jQuery. Or you could translate it to vanilla JavaScript. So to add jQuery, we're just going to run yarn add jQuery. Next, we'll add the plugin in our webpack environment.js. As you can see now, the form field is hidden. I just want to interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy. You're the goodest boy. Good boy. Down. Down. Oh my gosh. We're going viral, Bear. If you click Replace Current Image, you can see the form field will show. If we refresh, the form field is once again hidden and you have the two links. Next, if you click Remove Image Without Replacing and click OK to confirm, 
we'll delete our image and redirect us back to the edit profile page since we are currently logged in as the user attempting to make the edit. So let's go ahead and add that profile picture back in. As you can see, we have that back uploaded again. Next, we'll go ahead and drop in our profile picture. We'll add in a few classes to style things just to clean it up a bit. Here, let's allow for a little bit larger of a variant. Let's say 500 by 500. Now I logged out and logged back in as Bear's user. Let's go ahead and update his profile as well. Perfect. Being as this is the ADBS Rails series, we of course want to send our user uploads to an S3 bucket. So go ahead and log into the Amazon console, navigate to S3, and then click Create Bucket. You already have a bucket you'd like to use, that's fine. I'm gonna create a new one specifically for these uploads. I'm gonna call it ADBS Rails Uploads, and then click Create. Next, navigate to AIM. We need to create a user to give our application programmatic access to be able to have the permissions to make these uploads to our S3 bucket. Before we create our user, let's actually just create the policy that we're gonna to attach to that user first. So click Create Policy, then go ahead and choose a service. We're gonna choose S3. To work with active storage, we need to allow for four different permissions on our policy. List bucket, put object, get object, and delete object. So let's go ahead and find those now. Here, if you unfold list, we can choose the list bucket option. And we can collapse that. You can try to find these visually, or we could just start typing it out. Get object. Click that. Next, we need put object. And finally, we need delete objects. Next, we can choose the resources where these permissions will apply. So for the bucket, that's listing of the bucket down here. And I know that because it's the only permission that deals with the entirety of the bucket. For that, we want to choose a specific resource. So we're going to add an ARN, or Amazon resource name. Here you'll just paste the name of your S3 bucket. This will limit our Amazon AIM user to only be able to access this specific S3 bucket. Let's go ahead and add that. Now for objects, the get, delete, and put, we can choose any, as we want those permissions to apply to any object in that bucket for our new user that we're about to create. Go ahead and click Review Policy. Give your policy a name. In our case, we're gonna call it ADBS Rails S3 Policy. You can also give your policy a description. Once you've come up with a name and description, you can go ahead and click Create Policy. Now that we've got our policy, let's go ahead and create our user. Then we're gonna attach this new policy to that user. Go ahead and click Add User. Once you've given your user a name, you wanna check Programmatic Access. This will allow Active Storage to access our S3 bucket using the permissions that we just gave it associated with this user. Then we gotta click next to permissions. And in the end here, you're gonna click attach existing policy directly. We can search for our policy that we just created. You can see our policy and it's easy to find because there's no icon. Policies that Amazon has generated for you by default all have this gold Amazon logo. Custom policies don't have anything here. So it's really quick and easy to see your policies. You can also see over here, type is, is customer managed versus AWS managed. This icon here is just a visual cue for, for what this type column is saying. Go ahead and select our custom policy and click next. Here you have the opportunity to add tags. We're just gonna go ahead and skip this now. Finally, you can review. We're satisfied with everything we've selected, so we're gonna go ahead and click create user. Now that we've created our user, we see an access key and secret access key. It's important to download this CSV once you leave this page, you will never have access to these credentials again. So if you lose these credentials, you'd have to create a new user and then replace it in your Rails application. So you just wanna make sure that you download that CSV and then put it in a safe place. Once you've downloaded your credentials or viewed them in the user interface and saved them off to your password manager of choice, you can go ahead and click close. So we're almost ready to deploy. We just need to take a few more steps to finish up. The first thing we need to do is add this new user to our credentials so that we can use it in our storage.yml file. So go ahead and run Rails Credentials Edit. So if you've been following along with the other tutorials, you'll see the SES user in here. We could have added those permissions directly to that user, but I wanted this to function as an independent tutorial in case somebody just wanted to learn how to add active storage to the Rails application. So know that that is an option for you. If you want to keep your users to a minimum, you could just add the additional parameters or rather policies 
to the user you already have. In our case, we'll just paste them into the separate credentials. Go ahead and click X so that can encrypt and save. Next, we're gonna to navigate to config storage.yml. Here you can see example formats of various services you would use. We're just gonna go ahead and paste ours in now. We're using the Amazon S3 service, and then we're just calling Rails credentials to grab the access key and secret access key that we just added to our credentials file. Finally, we're adding the region and bucket name. Once complete, save this file. Next, we'll head to the production environment to tell Rails we want to use this new Amazon storage. Here you can see that active storage by default is set to local. So instead, we're going to update that to our new Amazon storage service. If we run get status, you can see everything we've updated. We're going to go ahead and add everything now. Get add dot, get commit, dash m. Typically, you would want to make smaller, cleaner commits on a separate branch. I'm just moving forward quickly for speed's sake, as I know this video is going to be long. So now that we've got all our code committed and pushed up to our external repository in GitHub, we need to do one last step before our deployment. We can SSH into our server. Here, I'm gonna log in using SSH keys. If you don't have those set up yet, I have a tutorial covering that that I'll link in the card and the description below. Once we're logged in, we can go ahead and clear the screen and run the following line. This is installing image magic on our server. The reason we need to use image magic is because we're performing image manipulations in the form of our image resizing. I recommend doing this before you deploy, just so you don't forget. Technically, you could finish your deployment and everything would look like it worked until you tried to upload an image. Once you upload an image and try to render that page, everything would fall apart. Now that we've got Image Magic installed, we can exit out of the server. Now we can deploy our app with bundle exec cap production production deploy. Once we finish deploying our application, we can head over to adbs-rails.com and log into our user. You can see now when we click Edit Profile, we can choose a file to upload. And if we click Edit Profile, we have the opportunity to remove without replacing or replace the current image. In this case, let's replace the current image. You can see we can upload a new image, our coworker Bear. So that's all I want to cover in this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if this video helped you out. I'd really appreciate that as we're uh, still a smaller channel. And I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.